right, folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Headed to our meeting house for the day. We have our, our big community meeting once a month, and today is that day. If you are local, if you've ever been to our meeting, please show up. It's going to be a good one. Um, we've got a good topic, and then just lots of people there. And, and if if you've never been and you're kind of in my area in the Ozarks, shoot me a quick email and I'll do my very, very best this morning in between all the running around that I'm doing to, to get it, uh, get you a response and tell you where you can show up at. Uh, it's a big building, a big family friendly event. There's food, there's lots of just talking and networking. Uh, and then today we're talking about uh, ham radio, GMRS, CBs, all you know, radio communications, uh, and also how to how to make antennas. I mean, yeah, you can buy them, but good ones are expensive. But you can make antennas out of just about all kinds of scrap stuff you probably have lying around your property. So we're going to learn learn that today. Speaking of that. funny how the, the, the topic I just had a conversation with a group of my, my, my inner circle guys texting and it inspired me to, to make the video so so Leon if you watch this you're, you're it's your reason you're you're the one that caused me to make this video anyways we were talking about these people up in Colorado tragically you probably heard about them they went up there to live off the grid and be survivalists and be preppers and all this kind of stuff and they died now the news I suspect it's it's the, one of the reasons why it's being talked about I, I, I was reading an article this morning and you know they emphasize that they were trying to teach their children at home and they wanted to live off the grid uh, outside of you know the system and everything so of course that fits with the uh, the left's narrative that, you know, you can't live like that. Uh, it's, it's unsafe. It, it's so dangerous. Uh, but the reality is, is because of, apparently, according to the story, is, is that these people had gained all of their, their survival, homesteading, off-grid knowledge from watching YouTube videos. And, and I, I mean, here I am making YouTube videos. I don't make a whole lot of teaching ones. Um, mostly because they seem to fall on deaf ears. I do, I do teaching videos more on on my membership platform. You know, it just seems to go over better there. But the point is, is that yes, you can learn things from watching YouTube videos. But that's that's knowledge, and you need to learn how to apply that knowledge to real life, which is where you get wisdom. And unfortunately. I think that there are too many people, and I'm not here to beat these people up that perished, you know. They're, they're people, they have families, you know, there's hurting people because of that. But we've heard this story far, far too often in modern times and in past history of people with no experience, no, no concept of how hard it is to go out and live a, a life, you know, out and away from society. And then they either fail because they, they either, you know, like these people, didn't survive, or they just gave up because it was too hard. And, you know, there's a couple of lessons that I can see at least here, maybe more. Number one, just the, the actually getting out and living this lifestyle. I've said before, it's not, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to live this way. It's hard, especially starting off, it's hard. Especially if you start off nothing. I was saying the other day in a video, and I got called a liar for this, that I know people that have, you know, physical ailments, and that they live off-grid in a tent. And I was called a liar, said it's not possible. It's not, it's not physically possible with someone with medical conditions to live in a tent off-grid. That they have to have air conditioning. They have to have running water. Well, over the last few years, I have got to know and actually visited a few people and they're not all just followers of my channel just people that I know in the area that at least started off living that way in a tent on a piece of property that they own and some of them were not in peak health condition some of them were retired um, 
I, I know a couple that's in their 70s and he has medical problems and they bought a one of those shell those sheds no electricity no air conditioning and they spent the first winter because it happened so quickly without hardly any any um, insulation in it or anything and but they survived and of course now little by little they built it up and they have a nice little place I'm telling you it is possible if you're determined it's it's easy it's it's not hard in the sense that it's not hard to just do it but it is complicated I, I don't know if that makes any sense you can live that way if you're determined to live that way so I think that's part of it a lot of people they're, they're so used to a, such an easy lifestyle they just don't understand what it's like you know every day maybe it's no air conditioning sleeping at night when it's 85 and 90 degrees at night you know and 70 80 percent humidity because that happens in the south and it can get quite miserable at night well, what it's like not having clean fresh water on demand you know what it's like to have to start a fire and get the coals all right and and the right kind of heat just to cook a meal it's it's not simple it's it's not a fast thing I don't think a lot of people understand that. I think that's also a sign of the times that we're in, that people are so separated from their food, they're separated from survival, they're separated from nature, they're separated from hard work, from sweating. You know, I was talking to my wife just the other day that I'm a firm believer that sweating is super healthy for you. You know, your body, that's one of the ways that your body um, gets off toxins, is through your skin, through sweating. People don't sweat enough. Some people hardly sweat at all. They live in a complete climate controlled environment. These things are good, they're natural, they're healthy, but they're hard. They're not difficult, but they're hard. People need to learn to do them. And if you can't handle it, then you may not be able to survive what's coming at us. So that's, that's part of it. I think the other part is, is that just people don't have common sense anymore. Because they've lived such a a lavish comfortable lifestyle and I know you're saying oh these people aren't wealthy no the poorest person in America the average poor person lives a, a more luxurious lifestyle than most wealthy people did hundreds of years ago the average poor family that's getting you know food stamps and maybe some welfare and uh, you know, they, they live in a government housing or something. They have more luxurious amenities in their life than kings and queens did three, four hundred years ago. And that's just the, the truth. <clears throat> and we've lived such a, as a society, such a an easy, comfortable life. I'm not saying that every one of you, your life is easy. Don't Don't get me wrong. Some of you work very, very, very hard for a living. But the majority of Americans don't have to, whether they don't work at all, maybe ones that do work, they still lead a pretty easy lifestyle. You know, they don't have to worry about where their food comes from. They don't have to work hard to create food. They just have to work to make enough money to go buy it. They, they don't have to go out and raise it and spend weeks and months producing food you know, then harvesting it, preserving it, or, or butchering it, processing it. They don't have to do that. They don't even know how to do it. They have no concept of that. You wouldn't believe how many people don't even understand the whole process of food. When you look at this, it gets easier and easier to see where the, the governments come up with their numbers that in the first 12, 9 to 12 months of, a, of an EMP attack or a major grid failure like a CME from, from the sun, that 90% of the American population would die. <clears throat> Some people just have no concept. They, they don't have any common sense. They just, they can't, they can't fathom, you know, how things really work. You know, these people, I think one, I don't know if it was how they died or something I was reading, that they were, uh, had a fire inside of a regular little tent you know, in a, in a can, like a coffee can or a soup can to stay warm in the Colorado winters. And it gets cold up in the winters. I've been there. They had no, I guess they didn't think about, you know, the smoke, being able to breathe, set, setting things on fire. You wouldn't believe how, I hate to say it in reference to these people that's perished, but 
how ignorant people are. Now, that's not being mean. That's just making an observation. And it shows how sad we've become as a society. That we just, people don't know how to fix things. Um, I remember once a few years back, um, I came upon a, she was a young college girl. She was broke down, well, she was in a parking lot. And her car wouldn't start. And I said, I think the battery's just dead. Let's jump the battery, you know, jump the battery. And I had the cables and stuff. So I pulled my vehicle around and I said, go ahead and pop the hood. And she looked at me, she goes, what? I said, pop the hood. She goes, what do you mean? I said, pop the hood so I can hook the, hook the battery cables up. Well, what's that? I said, you know, the hood of your car. Pop the hood. And she's like, I, I don't know what you mean. Like, what, what are you talking about? So I had to explain to her what popping the hood is and explain to her how to do it. She's like, it, it wasn't, there wasn't even a, like, she just was completely had no concept of what I was talking about. None whatsoever. Um, we, we've probably all seen videos of people trying to pump gasoline or, you know, trying to make something work and they have no concept. Like, you know, I, I teach my children, especially the boys, but the girls too, that you don't actually have to know how to do something. You don't have to have someone teach you. You just have to be smart enough to learn how to figure it out. I can't tell you that the amount of things over the years that I've repaired successfully and had no knowledge whatsoever of how to do it. I just looked at it and I knew how basic mechanics work or how basic physics work. And I was able to determine that this piece must be this and this piece must be this and this looks like it's broken. So that probably is what needs to be repaired. And I do it and it works. It doesn't work every time. But the point is, is that we've lost, so much of our society has lost that ability to just figure things out, figure out how to survive. You know, there's the, um, there's people that call it like ancestral DNA or ancestral knowledge and stuff. I don't want to get deep into that, but there's just certain things, you know, like how does a baby know to latch on to a, to a you know, breast to feed when it's first born? You know, there's just certain things that's just embedded in our knowledge. And it used to be that way for a lot of things. There was just a lot of things that, that humans just were able to figure out. And, and it's like we've gotten so dumbed down that we can't. You know, they can, they can work a, a, a smartphone at two years old, but they can't figure out how to put gasoline in their car engine or how to start a lawnmower or, you know, just basic things. This is a, a big problem with our society. And this is a problem that's going to exacerbate substantially when things really fall apart. Like our society is only civil for the most part and it's becoming less and less civil, but it's only civil for the most part because people have a, it functions and people are able to kind of exist comfortably. You take that away and it's, it's going to be absolute, it'd be like going in probably, it'll be worse than going into the, the, the safari, you know, in, in Africa and the, the wild animals and stuff. It's going to be absolute crazy. And that's why the government says, you know, if something like this happens, we're talking 90% of the people are going to die in a year. That's abs and, and that has been backed up by tons of research and evidence. This is why we have to prepare. This is why you need to learn how to do stuff. You need to develop that common sense. Figure out how things work. Don't just think because you watched a few YouTube videos you can go out and survive. If you don't have that common sense and understand you know, how things function, you're going to be in a world of hurt. But you also need to be prepared because there's tens of there's hundreds of millions of people out there just in this country that have no clue about life. You know, as long as their smartphone and their computer and their remote and their Starbucks is handed to them and their delivery gets there on a decent time, they're okay. Beyond that, they have no clue. You better be getting ready. You better be stocking up, prepping up, getting out of the cities, building your communities, developing your skills, getting your heart in line with the almighty creator because we're, we're, we're on the precipice of a, a major societal civilization.